What's up guys, this is Bixelite signing in and welcome back to another video of mine. That's the best way I can introduce one of these videos because this is going to be a fun, fun video for me. Well, not really. Kind of kind of half an hour for the moment because, um, <clears throat> so, little context. Four years ago, I started YouTube. Well, not today, but in a few days I would have started YouTube. However... Every, t every time a year passes on the 29th of June, um, I do a little thing that was my past best of five games of the past year. Now, this is going to my list because it was down to other people. Call of Duty might be on there. Um, I don't know if Fortnite officially got released, though. That might be on there. Technically, it didn't, though. PUBG got fully released. Um... Some of the games that's like that got fully released as well. So, this is the list from um, blah blah, from starting from five down to one. I cannot remember what we did first year, but they've got all a little thing in common. We'll see about that. But, either way, let's kick this off with starting from number five. So, let's roll on the fucking stuff. Camera dab. Bullshit. So, to start off in fifth place of the year. So, a lot of things have been re-released a lot of the times. So, I do include those. That's, like, playable for me. So, however, as you what you can see now, you can see Danganronpa V3, which is basically what I've been playing a lot of, if I have to say so myself. But, this game did come out, I think it was in 2017 for the PC, which I'm playing on right now. But... It's just to showcase a little bit on what I've been up to, because, as you can see, these people are not dead. She's dead. These are just wax dolls. That's the last time I remember the story, but the reason why this is in fifth place is because I have played these before, because the, the game that I'm actually actually putting forward is Danganronpa Trilogy, and not V3, but because I'm currently playing V3, I don't know what I'm doing on the game yet, or whatever. This is where I am. Right. I'm trying to get some coins as well while I'm at it. Because um, what I've been doing, basically. So, the game came out this year, re-released for the PlayStation 4. And I bought it because I love Danganronpa. Like, there's, not been, there's never been a game where I picked it up and then played through the first game non-stop and then played through the second game non-stop. We had a pause about playing Danganronpa from time before. But still. So hence why I've been like playing a lot of it. But when we do this, I usually play like 20 minutes of each one. So yeah, kind of like this game. I like the um, aspect of... I love anime. I'm not a weeb or a weeaboo, but I do love my anime. I'll probably... Okay, I'm, I might be a little bit of a weeb. But um, I love this game so much. I don't know why, maybe because like the murder mystery kind of thing about it. And there's like murder involved and I kind of like those kind of things. And it's more of a twist on what normal tales are. Like, at the moment, we've got a girl who's dead who got stabbed in the neck. I have an inkling who's done it, but I don't know if I'm correct or not. That's what I like. Ooh, I decipher along with them, you know? Because I am going to actually be playing these these games down in the future after we've done Kingdom Hearts 3. Essentially, whatever freaking newest Kingdom Hearts games by the time we do it. Considering we're just about to finish up Chain of Memories by the time we get back. And then moving on to 350 slash 2 days. But, however, we're going to play this for a little bit then. And then we're going to move on to more other things. Because I've got to li literally make this short. I'm going to make it 10 minutes each this time though. I know I did last year. I did 20 minutes each. But I feel like 10 minutes is enough to showcase what it needs to be done. But ha 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 ha. This busted brainy beauty has this all figured out. So a little bit of context of what happened with her. There was a robot in this game. And we catch her cleaning him. Quotation marks. But the game made it feel like that she was literally having sex with the robot. It was really fucking weird. You mean you know who the culprit is? <clears throat> huh? The culprit? Fuck that! Hey. Shuichi, do we really have the time to be listening to her? What? Hey, wait! Well, we wait, goddamn minute! Are you just gonna ignore my genius ideal? What? Just listen to me, okay? Come on, listen to me. Listen. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, if you're gonna twist my arm, then I'll tell you. You better thank me for this. You know. You know, y'all are dumber than fleas. But even you get how weird these wax dolls are, right? They are strange. Are they for the ritual or another purpose? Well but I figured out it was just one glance. These are diversions. Could it be? Diversions? Listen up. 
Yep, the culprit used these wax dolls to distract us from something. Go ahead. Got a minute? What do you mean by that? What? How should I know? Isn't that Sherlock Holmes? <laughs> God fucking damn it, Mayu! Fuck you! Oh, you're a waste of time. Mikey turned and walked away. I can't say a blame. What was that? Huh? The hell's her problem? Is she on the rag or something? Hmm. So Angie made these wax dolls, huh? These the resemblance is pretty uncanny. They say the devil's in the details, you know? Let's just see how detailed these really are. <laughs> yeah. Mayu try to look up the wax figures. Hey. What are you doing? Stop that! <laughs> what? I just wanted to see if this doll was wearing panties. Um. Wait, do you have a doll fetish? Are you excited that your dead girlfriend is a doll now? <laughs> if you like wax dolls so much, don't go fuck the doll already. Fucking love this character. She's probably my favorite in this entire game so far. So I like, like the chemistry with the characters and how they all act and stuff. Like in Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc, my favorite character ended up surviving. Well, my favorite character actually ended up dying, but then my second favorite character ended up surviving. So I'm like, hey! So that's what I like about this game is like you get attached to characters. And it's like in the first one, they're trying, trying to spoil a little bit. You become best for like you become really friendly with this one character. Like the game's pushing you. Like, do you want to spend with this character? Go on, spend time with this character. I think that's what you should do. It's like, okay, that'll listen to the game. I'll do that. So I want you to try and get an attachment. It's like, haha, we killed your attachments. Fuck you. It's like, great. And then I start getting to attach to another character because she was gothic. I'm like, yes, she's cool. She. Also ended up passing through. So I'm like, God damn it, other characters I liked that happened in number two as well. Like, I like you, I like you, I like you. All my favorite characters ended up dying apart from one. Nope, all my favorite characters in number two ended up dying. And I got really pissed off about it. <laughs> I was like, fuck's sake. And I started playing this one and I got a little bit bored. But, because number three takes like a really long time to get going. But here we are anyway. So I do a taking my was a waste of time. All right, so I'm just gonna probably talk to these two people and then move on to the number four slot. Zumigi! <laughs> I'm not sure if it's okay to say this or not, but could Tenko be the culprit? Huh? Tenko? Huh? It's not like I have proof or, any or anything, but earlier I heard Himiko say that Tenko was trying to betray the student council. Who's Tenko? Oh, Tenko is the frickin' feminist. No. So you suspect Tenko? Actually... Because a member of the student council, she would have been allowed into this lab. Oh, yeah. That's right. Angie did allow members of the student council to enter her lab. Uh. Yeah, Angie had been shut away here working on the ritual by herself since yesterday. She said she would only unlock the door if she heard a student council members once. There was suddenly point to Tenko. She had betrayed the student council after all. It's not that I want to spite Tenko, but since only student council members would have been let in here, so Angie let in the student council members. That would be Gonta, Kibo, Himiko, Tenko, and Sumigi. See, Kibo is not his real name, it's I think it's K1B0, so that's why they call him Kibo. Of that group, Tenko is certainly most suspicious. So you can meet to count. All right, we're not going to actually go to the bullet truth of things here. So, a little recap of how people actually died. I know that might be a little bit spoiling the story, but we are going to play this in the future. So, currently, uh, the first victim was this guy. I cannot remember his fucking name. To save my life. But um, he knew a little bit about the game or about what was going on behind the scenes before anybody else. And because somebody, I mean, yeah, was um, trying to like stop, thought that she thought there was going to be an evil mastermind behind it, so she'd like set up a little trigger plan that ended up killing him in the regards. She ended up hanging because she got caught, because that's how the game works. The killer can get away from things, but if you get caught out, you die. Now, the second one was this little douchebag over here. He's a killer and a murderer. He's a killer, in, oh, killer and murderer, same thing. He's a killer, but he's like a professional tennis player as well, but he ended up being eaten alive, eaten by piranhas. He was dead way before that even happened, but he drowned and then he got killed by piranhas to hide all evidence, which was killed by the maid because she wanted to get rid of the get of the killer, try and get things out of the way, you know, because she was she was like told that, oh, yeah, this guy doesn't actually have any friends or family on the outside. I was like, I don't care if I live or die, because I've got no one waiting for me outside. If I make new friends, cool. If I don't, I don't need to leave this place. So she thought, you know what? He's got no friends. No one's going to miss him. I need to take my country, because she actually runs Japan. But she ended up getting shredded to fuck and then breaking her back or something like that. 
ended up killing a robot in the same place too. But now the current one is um, Angie on the floor here who got bashed the back of the head, had some several lashes in the back of the head, and then got stabbed through the throat. The stab, the sword in question now, is over there. Now I need to talk to Gunther, which is like basically Tarzan. Why? A murder at night time is strange. Impossible even. Why? Why do you think that? Right. Because student council made a rule that we know can be outside during night time. Everyone should have been asleep. No way murder could have happened at night time. Do you really think everyone would go along with that rule? But, but the tattoo's rule. Angie say he punish us if we don't follow these rules. But, but the student council wasn't induced in that. Correct? They could do what they wanted. Angie was also working here at night. <gasps> she was? But, no, no way. Student council would never break own rules. Right. They should have been asleep in own rooms to get good example to others. Yeah. Maybe Angie got attacked while she sleep in her room and got brought here? Gunter, if idiot. so, Gunter could have saved her, if only Gunter saw. But Gunter was sleeping. Sorry Angie, Gunter no could save you. I find it hard to believe that no one went outside in spite of the student council rule. Considering you spoke to him like about like 11, she wouldn't have left and to come back. Not in that amount of time frame when she died at two. If you want a little bit more context, I'm gonna try and find it. Um, I don't know my buttons, so I'm not used to play. I'm used to playing with controller. Oh, cool tree, here we go. Let's look at the monocle. So the victim is Ultimate Artist Angie Yunaga. The victim, whoops. How the fuck do I scroll with this? Ah, oh, there we go. The victim's body was discovered in the Ultimate Artist Research Lab. The time of death is approximately two in the morning. The victim was killed by a fatal stab wound to the back of the neck. Additionally, she has lacerations on her forehead. Oh, so it seems like what it sounds like to me, her head grabbed from the back, bashed onto a surface, and then someone stabbed the back of the neck. The stab wound in the back of the neck, so it's like, could have gone into the back maybe. The sword is there, but I believe the sword is now a red herring now, I've read through that again. Because seen the sword were too long, if that said, it's like, it would be pierced straight through the neck, right? Anyway, let's talk to Maki, my friend. I like this question. For my inclusions of this game, I have two favorite characters. She's one of them because she looks fucking cool and sadistic. And there was like a little red-headed, freaking tiny magician thing. She's adorable. The waifu of the game. I just want to confirm something. When we got to this lab, you are sure that the front door was locked? Okay. Yeah, it's a positive. I grabbed the doorknob and tried to turn it. Click, 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 click. Okay. It really is locked. I knew it. The front entrance was locked until Kikichi picked up the lock. To open. You can open the door. I have two people in suspicion now. Him because he can actually lock pick into the door so he can open it and lock it on whatever he can do. But Kikichi pulled out some thin needles and stuck them into the keyhole on the lock. It could be him, but my, my, it's somewhere else. They're open, says me. Hmm. So he picked the cylinder lock hey. open. Do you think anyone else could have opened the locks besides him? It would have been impossible from the outside. The monocups took the key. These little fuckers, I hate these things. Okay, here it is, but there's only one key, so don't lose it. It'd be bad if you lost it. You would have been able to lock the door or open it from outside. Let me see that key. Well, now swipe the key from Monofine. This is all that's what happened in the previous times. So on Nam. Ah, he ate it. There you go. So Kikichi is the only one who could have opened or closed the door from the outside, right? Mm. Correct. Only Kikichi would have been able to open and close the door from outside. But someone inside could have opened and closed as they pleased. Huh? So the front door was locked from inside the room. No. Not necessarily. I'm just thinking of possibilities. Oh, but in that case, the question becomes how the person who locked the doors got out. Well, not possible, though, is it, right? Because if Angie was inside the room, she may not have died here. Or, like, she might have bashed her head somewhere else and then put her back in. So, if anything, Kokochi... If it is Kokochi that's done the killing, which is like a little freaking fuck nut. I think my interpretation of it is she got bashed somewhere else... Because she was outside the room, because no one else would have been able to get in. Bashed it, got inside, and then someone <clears throat> either was in the room with us when we opened it, 
like Gokichi and just hid away until everyone turned up. I think that's what it is. I think that's what I can interpret it as. Is that someone comes in. So that's, that's, I think that's what would have worked. If she left the room, they would have been brought into the room because it can be locked from the inside without a key. So they could basically drag him inside, like bash her somewhere else that's outside the room, bring her into the room, lock the door, kill her inside the room, and then the killer can hide inside said room somewhere along all the commotion. And then when everyone, like, there's an announcement that says a body has been discovered, please make your way to this place. So when everyone turns it from the door, someone can come approach from the shadows and blend in. So that's what you've got to try and think of, like, if you're playing this game. You've got to try and feel like, what's all the possible outcomes? So there's, like, three possible solutions. Kokichi opened the door from the outside and got inside, killed her, and then locked it behind him again, because he can do that. There's a guy who's next door which has the possibility of the sword, which also could have killed him and then somehow... So he still could be hiding inside the room. He could have been the one to do so. But then... It's a very complicated storyline at the moment, so everyone's basically a suspect apart from me because I'm a good guy. Although saying that though, I was playing as a character who just did fucking die. But I think she comes back. Spoilers. How the go out of the classroom after locking the doors? I need to look around this room. Because possible hidings behind the wooden stables if they came in through this door. Because that's the back door. So if we came in through here... They killed her. They could hit hide behind here, and when everyone's come through, he joins them. That's what I think could have happened. And then it would have been everything else in sets. A little reference to the first game there with a the hammer. Marcus didn't die until later on, though. Was a chapter three, but not just died. I don't fucking know. A lot of similarities happen to the other game. I think two characters are going to die in the same chapter, though. It kind of does work like that in some weird way, unless it's just longer than normal. I don't know, but anyway. To summarize it up, Danganronpa Trilogy was my number five slot. So let's head on over to number four. All right. So we're moving on now to slot number four, which is, of course, Devil May Cry 5 if you cannot sell by the bus or by the garage. So basically, Devil May Cry 5 in the fourth slot this time around, why it beats Danganronpa is because it's a long favorite like good it's a good series of mine i love this game it's not the best in the series number three is still my favorite now number two was was the second one but now this this is really good i don't i do like this game i love all the, like the extra shit you can get on top you know I still need to find one more weapon in the game though i need to do that but i love how there's a new character in the game i didn't use a lot of that before i love how Yo, that's what you're supposed to look like? I prefer the, what, I, what I had you as, to be honest. Right. No point in doing any of this shit because I've got all the things I need. Oh, weirdly. So I locked. Is what I can get done? I don't fucking know. No idea. Right. Yes. So I'm just going to play this for a bit. Because um, I had to reinstall the disc and everything like that. So it's probably just going to be like a one-time use before I want to play it again. <laughs> so I need to uninstall it after I've done this. But the reason why I actually do like this game, though, more than the others, is it expands on the past of Nero and Dante and everyone like that. Just a little bit. you know, Because there's, like, there's a time before Dante was even a thing. Or when it was Tony Redgrave. I didn't know that, but obviously it might elaborate more in the comics. That were around about it and the anime. I've watched the anime once, but I didn't really pay attention much to it. Because to me, the anime was pretty meh. But the game, I do love this game. I love Dante's new sword. I love the freaking Sin Devil trigger. I love all of that. Now, I don't know how this... I don't want to use that weapon sword, thank you very much. Got my favorite weapon here. It's like, I love how it Dante's basically more like his father at this point now. God, I've been playing DMC too much. I want my shotgun, there we go. Right, sweet. So it's, it's more more about a game that now, this is, again, like, I'm going to say for number three, because I did number three before doing number four. I mean, for what's in the fourth slot and stuff. It's more like, um, 
I can definitely cry three and two. You can play the game. You can turn the game on and you can play it and do whatever you want to do on it. Like in number two as well. It's like, I want to kill some shit. Go put a game and kill some shit. Or in number three, I want to kill some shit. Just jump in. Fucking go ham. That's what I like about it. If you feel like... Like sometimes I'm really, really pissed off mood. Like for me, when I'm depressed, I go to get, get to play fear and it cheers me up. If I want to kill some shit or get really angry, I can play something like this. Have some fun, you know? Gets me in a really good mood for things. But what I actually love about this more than anything else, than than anything of the other Devil May Cry games, is that this brings back enemies of the old. Like this flam bat here, whatever it's called, the flame bat, is like an advanced version of ones you can see in number two, which is set before this. And all the other enemies return as well, like your weapons from before, they come back as like powered up weapons and shit, demons and stuff, which is just so, so good. Really, really good. I like how I still got the freaking boots from my DLC, but again, I get to choose my character for it. Oh, I'm so glad I can do that. Wait, is Trin Trillius have a still thing? I don't know how to do that yet. I, oh, there it is. The weird thing is, I've not played this for a long time. Like, after we played this, I did Devil May Cry 2 and the DMC. And it's still here, which is. I, my skills are still there, and I love this. Love, love, love this game. I find it really fun to play. And I could play this for a long, long time. It's no Devil May Cry 2, like, this is one of the enemies that returns. Which is fucking sick as shit. I just realised my Devil Trigger was not going up. <laughs> you know, my Sin Trigger? Which is quite strange. Like, see, it would make sense if Devil May Cry 2 was set after this one, though, because you do get to appreciate your sin trigger which is strange but I do like how this um, thingy mode works is that kind of strange that I like how this version works of it like even the angels from the previous game are here now which is fucking sick everything that was in the games before is now back again really why are my hands all red Don't know. Not going to question it too much. Maybe that's why. There we go. Oh, I forgot I could fight like this. Of course I could. So press B, I could do some freaking combos and shit. That's awesome. Oh, I forgot about that. That's, again, another thing for this. When Dante gets his like ultimate devil form, you can start being like a Virgil and press your B button for your summon swords, which is so much more stronger than what they should be. It is fucking fantastic. Oh wait, is there a way to like... Charge... Into Devil Trigger or something? Yeah, I thought they were. It sounds like you're supposed to charge when you get hit as well, isn't it? You're in your demon form. Like, these are new enemies, but they just remind me of... Um, the Goatlings. From Devil May Cry 2, which is quite nice. But again... Oh my god. I don't love how this game is such an advancement from what number 4 was and from Capcom not liking DMC Devil May Cry and then turned it into this. Yeah, the person who made it might agree that there should be a number 2 for DMC but he wanted them to do it. But obviously they got taken the rights away from it. Because he knows people like it but then Capcom might people prefer this. So it got so much fucking hate. But again, that's the point though, isn't it? Like, you're creating games, and Blades, of course, they make a good triumphant return. My fucking worst enemies completely. Right, here we go, boys. I'm ready. That's what I love about this. Like, this fucking Devil Trigger returns. Love it. It is just so much more better than what it needs to be, dude. I wasn't expecting such badassery in this game, and it, when I saw it, I was like, yes! Oh, it gets you so blood pumped and everything, just seeing all this shit again, you know? Right, just take a little bit of a cheeky heal. Which is, which is, it's just... Like, the DLC for the game as well. I didn't even know these were enemies in the game now, but they are for some reason. Fuck you, bitch. These seem so simple, and that bloody palace in this one just seems so much more reason than what it were. Which wasn't actually originally in the game until, like, a few days later when they actually updated it to have this. Which is quite fun. 
but um man this is like so fucking good like these remind me of like the Beelzebubs from number one a lot of enemies returned in this Nilos Angelos returns I well, in a sense Virgil returns everything fucking what was once before has now returned and I fucking love it you can't say that it's not that bad or good when you've got shit like this going on you know it's just so so fucking awesome Right, I'm going to start getting some things up. There we go. Right. Double trigger time, bitches! Oh, I, I cannot get hold of that. So fucking cool. Especially the flame blasts. They know something was in number two that actually people loved. And they brought it through. It's simple as that. They know people loved it. They fucking know people love this. Oh my god, it's so good. But they made it more like, oh yeah, this is a permanent upgrade. It even reminds you from number one when he got really pissed off. That's some good shit for you right there. It's awesome. Fucking brilliant. This game is just everything I wanted Devil May Cry 5 to be. Still not as, I like Devil May Cry 3 more because of how, because I just love Agony and Murderer so much. But again, number five is a very close second. Like everything, everything you could ask for, for a better version of a Devil May Cry game is this. Which is just so, 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 so good. But, however, I am going to have to suspend my game right there, though, because... Hmm. Cool. But... My God, Devil May Cry 5. What a way to bring back the Devil May Cry series. Like, number 4 was back in 2008, and it nearly it took more than 10 years to bring back Devil May Cry as a game. But yeah, we know DMC Devil May Cry came out, and then after that came out, ah, well, let's release number four, and then we'll start working on number five. And then number five came out, people loved it, people adored it, and it got back to what people wanted. So, there goes number four slot. It goes to Devil May Cry 5. I'm looking forward if they ever make a number, number, number six. I'll buy it. Definitely. So I wasn't actually really keen on, I wasn't, Going to originally get this, but I'm glad I did get it on day release. So I could record it, because that, my god. Such, such a good game. But, anyway, that's number four slot, Devil May Cry 5. So, I'm going to head over that way now. Let's head into the third slot. Third slot now that we've gone with through Devil May Cry as being slot four. So, Devil May, uh, Resident Evil 2 first came out in 1998. No, I think it would maybe 1999 or 2000 something like that but see here i don't currently have the disc on me so i can't actually record myself playing the game however there is a video here that i found on youtube that belongs to Zanar aesthetics so i'm going to watch this video here of the tofu survivor and basically just talk about why i like the game so resident evil 2 the remake of everything about it was um was everything I actually ever wanted out of a Resident Evil game, to be honest. Like, when number 7 came out, excuse that bit. When num when Resident Evil 7 came out, I was expecting it to actually be like Resident Evil 2. And then when Resident Evil 2 actually came to light, I was really excited for it. Because you got high definition zombies, I got to play as Clarigan, which is basically my favourite, favourite character. Out of all the entire Devil May Cry series. Uh, out of the entire Come in, Alpha. Resident Evil series. Alpha, because the best thing about Resident Evil, or Resident Evil 2, this is the weird thing. My favorite, my favorite name for a female is actually Claire. And my favorite character in Resident Evil 2 is Claire. Now, this is weird how I can just tie it into Kingdom Hearts. Because my favorite character in Heroes is also named Claire. Which is voiced by Hayden Penetiri. But Hayden Penetiri plays the original voice for Kyrie in Kingdom Hearts. So therefore, they kind of linked in that little path. Yeah, it's stupid, but still. But the fun thing about Resident... About... Um... About Resident Evil 2 in itself, though, was like how it's such a good remaster of an original game. But at the same time, though, how being a remake of itself... Um... There's a, there's some things, like, I wouldn't give this game a 5 out of 5. I'd definitely give it a 4 out of 5 because it's not true to the roots. Like, yes, yeah, some things do change between 
Claire A and Claire B or Leon A and Leon B because I have done both scenarios. I have played this game a lot. I played it when it first came out. I'll probably beat it twice afterwards as well because the game's actually really, really fucking good, which is crazy. But another sense of the game, though, is more about um, just seeing all the old enemies again, you know, like William G. Birkin and the Tyrant on all over again, or Mr. X, as it's called. <clears throat> it's, it's games like this that make me love the horror series. Like, it's not really a scary game, but it is the true definition of survival horror. You go for a case, you try and survive as best you can, and so on and so forth, which is why... But Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 2 for the PS1 is my second... No, sorry, my third favourite Resident Evil game. My first, obviously, being... Well, not obviously, but my first one being Code Veronica, and my second favourite... Well, now my second favourite is Resident Evil 2, the remake, but I think before that one it was probably Resident Evil 4 or maybe one of the Outbreak games, because I actually do like them. But it's a bit strange how the, the remake of this, though, was just, like, hard-hitting, and then a lot of people who didn't actually play the original game can now play it, obviously, because we re-released number one so many times. Now we get to really release number two. Hopefully they're going to work with... Um, Number three as well, because number three is like... They've already got the map for number three down. They just need to like expand on, expand on a few areas. Which is pretty fucking cool. Because you start in the police station, number three. You move to the streets, you go to a church. So they could... Fucking adverts. So they could continue onwards, which is bloody perfect. I need to fucking edit that shit out. But other than that, though, there's like really... I should talk more about Resident Evil 2 itself, though, shouldn't I? Really, instead of just like saying how much it feels for me to play it, because I didn't really, I didn't use it actually, but I didn't start playing Resident Evil 2 until like about 15, I think. Like that's when I started playing it for sure. Because I remember playing number three when I was a child. Didn't, well, I watched someone play number three, played it for a bit, got scared, didn't play it again. But then, when I started buying all my PS1 games a lot, Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3 was on my list, and I loved them, absolutely loved them. But now, now the remakes out. There's a lot more... Well, there's not even a lot to do in the game. You can just play it. Just for the sake of playing, if you want to shoot some zombies. Like, obviously the survivor modes are really good. But there needs to be a mode. Like, obviously, I like how they brought back Tofu as well. Because he was actually in the original Japanese release of the game. Not in the Western, those. But I think the one thing this is missing, apart from the correct storyline of Claire B and Leon B. The other thing that I personally believe... Oh, I need to reinstall the game again? Oops. <laughs> that didn't go down well. Um, what I feel like the game is missing, though, is like a mode like this, but where you have unlimited bullets, so you can just pound and pound and pound on anything you want, which is one of the best things about Resident Evil. Games. But still like how they brought that back to survival mode. Resident Evil 7 didn't have it. Resident Evil 6 had a horde mode, but not a survival mode. Resident Evil 5, as far as I'm aware, didn't have one. Resident Evil 4 didn't have one. It had something like it. it had a horde mode again. Or it might have had a survival mode. I can't really remember. I've not played it in a long time. Number 4. But a lot of games like Resident Evil Code Veronica had one. If you get the Code Veronica X version, you get Survivor 2. as like a, a bonus thing if you beat the game. Which is really, really fucking cool. Like if you haven't played those games. Because I'm going to buy... I'm gonna, I, think, I don't know if to play Survivor or Resident Evil 4 next on the channel. But I feel like... I can't really talk much more about it, but apart from that, obviously, you've got your game. I love the characters that go along as well. Like, the voice acting is great. The freaking game itself is a really, really good game. Like, if you want to go into a game, probably got, what I would do is, like, go for a save point if you want to shoot some zombies, like, load it up, but I'd probably load up a better one than this one. Well, it's not. I'm not saying it's the worst one. I'm not saying it's the better one. Well, it is the best one of the series, but for, like, shooting a zombie wise, just want to fucking kill some zombies, then I'd rather do something else instead of playing this game because it's more linear there's nothing extra to do in the game apart from these things but like in the survival ones all you gotta do is run you're running and not playing the game so which is what you've got to do some sadly but either way though i'm gonna have to pause this video here because i accidentally fucking cut it off there but um because it's not my video so i don't want to like but most likely you're gonna get copyright straight down if you're using someone else's fucking thing or something like that. But it doesn't really bother me. I would play it myself, but currently don't have the disc. But, hey ho, that's all there is for, um, Mark number three for, uh, number third, number three slot goes to Resident Evil 2. 
So let's have a quick recap before we go into number two. So in slot number five, we have had Danganronpa Trilogy for the PS4. Love that game. In slot four, we had Devil May Cry 5. Also love that game. I would say it is my f second favorite Devil May Cry game. I don't know why I'm saying that, because I've not actually done the part of Devil May Cry yet. I need to get it reinstalled. So I'll talk all about that. You've just heard a whole rant about that. And then, next, is slot number two. Well, here we are. Number two slot. Wow. Does this actually surprise anybody? You don't get the character screen, but Crash Team Racing Nashua Fueled. Only came out a few days ago, but... My god. This game. Now, a little bit of context why this is actually second and not first. You could probably guess what first is at this point. Considering I've mentioned so many goddamn times how much I love the series. So, yeah, well, that's a little spoiler for that if you don't need to. Oh, yep, I know this guy. I know what's number four, one for him. La di da. That's for me, not for everyone else. Like I said, people probably do Call of Duty or PUBG or freaking whatever fucking shit came out. But e this might even be on a lot of people's high list. Because I remember playing this when I was six. Like, the original game for the PS1, I was playing this when I was six. And now, this game is just... Oh, my God. Like, I've played it. And when I first played it, it's like, wow. This literally trip down memory lane. And then I played it more, I was like, oh, my God, this game's fucking incredible again. But not only that, though. Like, in the original game, you had Crash, Neo Cortex, Tiny Tiger, Coco, Dox Engine, Ripperoo, Penta Penguin... Was literally in the original game, like, I can't believe that like, Chico brought him back. P Pura, yeah, Pura, Polar, Dinga Dial, Papu Papu, Komodo Joe, Pinstripe, and Nitrous Oxide. Everyone below here, apart from Entropy and Fake Crash, is in Crash Team, or Crash Natural Cart. And now that he added it to the game, was like, fucking wow. I love it. I really fucking do. And in a few more days' time, I'm gonna struggle. Oh, this is Coco Bug. Uh, and in a few more days' time... And then... Um, and like, when this game originally came out, or when like... Oh, fucking hell, being too loud. So you might hear them in the background. But, um... They've got... The um, trophy ladies, who was in the original game, like, who give you the trophies, and freaking Crash Bandicoot's... Girlfriend. Like, all those five people was original but they're not it wasn't in the original game but they're bringing them out soon then they're releasing the tag, tag team racing tracks and the freaking characters in that that was added to it like nina and some of the baby characters that they're just gonna create and then a few more months down the line we're gonna get spyro as a character to drive man i'm excited for this game like even in the future like this game's already like oh yeah people are gonna get bored of this but hey give it two weeks get yourself to the game I'm telling you now you will fucking love this game and i do and already knowing that there's going to be extra characters like that, I am so freaking excited for it. Like, for me, I don't think it can be better. It cannot be better than what's already there, you know? It's just so good. But still. Might be a little bit quiet because I need to freaking concentrate. Either way, like, it's what I like about this game. Like, you can unlock characters by buying them within the game. Like, not using your real money. But you can purchase them with in money that you gain but like if you play story mode on your own you can't well you can but you only get like 50 between well between 15 and 80 coins but if you go online like you get a random jump between the lowest i've got is 100 online and that's from coming first or you can go like even worse than that or like sometimes i've come first before and then i just got 100 and sometimes i've come sixth and got triple that, which is just strange. <sighs> now I'm getting fucking conned. That's what I don't like about this game sometimes. And it's like Mario Kart all over again. For those of you who have actually played Mario Kart in the few in the in the past, it was like you do so well, and then after a while you just get fucking bombarded by shit. You know. But very rarely, I've come less than second. Okay, is that a rocket or is that? Yep. Wow. Well done, fucking homing missile. You fucker. You try and get good. But then shit like that just stops you from being good. And I can't do anything about that because that freaking slows me down. Bowling bombs and shit. 
have that bitch, so I'll have a clock now, shall I? Oh, there's a little bit of delay, that's why, okay, I see. That makes sense, there's a delay. Which, you can expect, they've even had problems because they wasn't expecting so many to be online when it- Fuck off! When it first came out and, well, let's just say this game flew up the rankings for people's, like, online game for the time. Like, it's good. It's really- Fuck off! Why did that hit me? It was nowhere near me! Fuck you, bitch. Get the fuck behind me. Like, everyone else can get behind me too. Alright, I'll take third. It's fine by me. Like, so like I said before, I've come first once and I got 100 coins, so today it might be really good good for things. I like those characters freaking Sonic Chaos. But see, I'm not last, and I got 170. Got more than freaking do when I come first, which is great. But, I'm gonna do one more race because this game is just, like really, really good. Like, it, when there's more people on, it's more fun to play. Like, again, there's, there's not, you don't need to win to have fun. Like, people are probably just playing this game, yeah, haha, I'm first, look at me go. It's like, well, I don't care about coming first or last. I'm getting coins. I'm not phased. <laughs> I really am not phased, but... See, before I bought this game, I was excited for it. And then, when I bought the game, and it said, oh yeah, CNK characters are coming. Crash DNA Nitrocart characters are coming, I'm like... Are you being serious? I love that fucking track. Jungle Blue is my favourite. But... I was like, are you being serious? That's the release in CNK characters. I want to bought the game. I was like, oh yeah, it's all here for you. Tracks, characters. And I was so, so, so excited at that point. And then I read a little article that, oh yeah, Spyro's coming to the game. I was like, need this game in my life. So I've loved it. Been playing it a lot. Play it every night. <laughs> Quite a bit. Fucking Jungle Boogie though. My favourite track in this game. I just love it. I know what I'm doing. I wonder if people are going to be like me. I uh, no. I don't know if people will take shortcuts or not. I know the shortcuts to take, but people are going to like, gonna, like Fuck off, some good bullshit stuff, but... And see, there it says single race, but soon there's going to be Grand Prix where it's going to be a lot more fun to play. Like, so far there's 26 characters. I've still got two more characters to unlock. No, three, sorry. I need to buy Krunk, which mine, this can push towards. And I need to unlock Entropy, which I've done one race. Obviously, Jungle Boogie. Fucking annihilate him. As it is. It's like, oh, hey, you did this thing. Yeah, by the way, you unlock this guy on your first turn. Some good. <laughs> Love this fucking track. But... Yeah, I'll do this one last race and then we'll uh, move on to slot one and play that for a bit. Because it's going to be fun. So, I'll do a recap at the end as well before we end off. But still, Crash Team Racing, game of my childhood, and a game to play now. And I can play this game a lot. I might get bored for, with it within a few days. But again, when the Grand Prix mode comes out, I'll play it all over again. I'm not phased. Love this fucking game. So good. It's a really good remake. Like, you don't see, see a lot of rumors like, oh, you've, you've, you've lost some things out, but this. The only thing I can say bad about it is that it's a lot faster paced than before. Which is obviously newer shit and stuff, right? There we go. First one to go off the fucking tracks. And that's it. Game over. There we go. Oh, you got lucky there, bitch. And I got fucking rocketed. Great. Ugh. It's fine. This isn't everyone's battle, though. It's all good. Ooh. We've got a few people coming up here, have we? Alright, this is going to be interesting. Very interesting, indeed. Alright. Fine by me. Fuck you, bitch. That's so why I've got a shield in the first place. Alright, so this guy at front is going to be a little bit of a... No doubt he's unlocked Entropy. Right? That's a possibility, yes? But I'm going to try my best to come first in this race. This is my favourite track of the entire game so far. Probably my next one is Polar Pass because I'd have to like do a little bit of a, a mini cheat. And my shortcut never missed it. One of my the best shortcut in the game by far. Fuck you, Rocket, going the wrong way. But hey, easy second. I'll bloody take it. Fucking hell, they've got like a tiny little bit of homing on it. A very tiny bit of homing. Oh, nearly fucked up with a going into the red bottle. Oh, this is fine lap, isn't it? Shit. Oh, why did I hit nothing? Probably hit a rock. I don't want to hate this game. Like, with bullshit. Like, the only time I've had a problem with it is when it first came out and... You fucked me up in my bloody corner, you tosser. Well, he's got passed through because somehow he maintained his speed. Like, so I, I've noticed some cheats online. But again, like I said, it doesn't bother me. I came second, I came third last time, right? I've not become, uh, I've came twice in sixth. 
because I was just getting hit by everything and just driving off the track. I was doing bad. But other than that, I did. I, I love this game. It's a beautiful remake of a classic. And I bloody, bloody, bloody love this game so much. I play this game a lot. See, 180. I think they've actually edited this freaking coin you get. Because I used to get a lot more than that when I first started. Unless it dishes out to many people who are playing. Like, there's only two people you might get. Hey, look at this. She dishes out this many. Like, so I got 500 when I was playing with two people. Like, me and this other guy. Then when there were three, kind of like went about 300. So I think it actually, like, there might be a limit of how many it gives you. So it's like seven, eight people playing, you'll get less. I think it works like that, position-wise. So it evens out. That's why we got, like, 10 more than last time. So first place might have only got 200 because there were so many people playing. That's why I would put it. And it makes sense that way. So no matter where you come, you're still going to get something. I think you come last place. Hey, good job. You got 100. Makes sense, right? 200, 170, 180. But anyway, I'm going to quit that there because it's going to take you into the pit stop. What I really played the game for. Because there's loads of things to do in this game. Like, yeah, you can do the campaign and stuff like that, which I have currently been doing. Still not beating it, but pit stop is where it all is. I could literally do one more race later and just get crunk. And that's it. All the characters are unlocked for me. But again, there's cars now. There's new cars. Like in the original, you only had one car. Now there's loads. Like in Crash Nitro Car, there's only four. And now I've got already got five of them. Because you unlock the rest of the ones. Like, hey, it's a little nod towards all, which is so fucking good, though. Like, you can get Coco's, costumes. Costumes in this game. Costumes were never a thing before. It's basically an advancement of both games, or all three games shoved into one apart from you can't future cars, but that's perfectly fine by me, and I love it. But, either way, that is all for Slot 2 with Crash Team Racing, and I love it. So, let's move on to number one spot. It won't surprise you, like, at all. So, you want to know what Slot 1 was? Does it fucking surprise you that Kingdom Hearts 3? Does it surprise anybody that my favorite game in the past year that I've played? I bet we'll find some ingredients around here. Why don't you shut the fuck up, Goldfly? Right. So I'm actually in this location because I'm like trying to look for these things. Which, uh, I don't know how to flip my camera. There we go. So I'm all about freaking posing and shit. How the fuck do I do things? Oh, we've got that one. Nice. Sweet. So, now Kingdom Hearts 3. I don't need to actually give an explanation why this one is in my freaking list. Olympus is done. Olympus is not done? What? Why can't I go to Olympus? I've beaten the game, I should be able to go anywhere. Right? I am confused. So found them all in that location. Oh, I'm doing it on Xbox, that's why. Okay, never mind. I found three of them in Winnie the Pooh. That was a nightmare to find. But uh, currently trying to find three more in here. Which is... Ecstatic, to be honest. But still. Kingdom Hearts 3. Why is my favourite game of, the, of um, the past year that I've been playing games? Well... Excuse me, children. Can I get to that box, please? Can you fuck off? I'm trying to get to the bloody box. But anyway. So, this game was announced back in 2013. And every year... Well, since it actually was announced back in 2013. I've had it pre-ordered that long. Like, I was waiting five years to get this game processed. Or to get this pre-ordered down. I ended up buying two copies because I'm fucking sad. And I love my Kingdom Hearts games, like, to death. It's what I live for. It literally is what I live for. But, like, I'm playing games you can glide and fly and stuff. This game's so good. Okay, I'm not stupid, but I've already got that one. Never mind then. <laughs> I know what these Disney symbols look like. I've been looking for a very, very long time. But I want to kill some Heartless. But either way. The reason, hang on, I know this game, I know this game, well, fuck off, I'm gonna go back on that bridge, but um, anyway, so I've been waiting like five years, maybe, wow, six years for this game to come out, and every year was like, yo, it's coming closer, and when it got announced, 
I was screaming. I was crying. I played this game. I cried. This, me and this game or this game series have so much of a connection. Well, I have a connection with it because it, I don't know why it just takes me away to a different place. I love this game so much. But now here's a little bit of a sad part of the game. Kingdom Hearts 3 is not the best Kingdom Hearts game. It's certainly not the worst. It is my second favorite Kingdom Hearts game. Second. Of all the Kingdom Hearts games, this is my second favorite. Kingdom Hearts 2 will always be better than this. Unless, like, the DLC later at the end of the year. Which I'm excited for. Um, I think next year is the only one that's actually gonna, not going to contain a Kingdom Hearts game, to be honest. But I do need to pay attention to where I'm actually taking a picture of. Because I am trying to do a little bit of like an achievement hunting at the moment, but I do have this for the Xbox Three, uh, Xbox One, as well as the PS4, because I want them both. Bought them both. Currently, my Xbox One edition is not around, but I am getting it back soon to play more. Because when I go to record the game, I'm going to be doing it on my Xbox One. I'm going probably going for 100% completion rate. So I want my achievements, and I want to do it on critical. I'm fucking doing it. Or I might just do it on this on critical and just fuck everyone over, because. I started playing Kingdom Hearts when I was, I think it was like 14, and I only played a little bit in one when it first came out, but then, yes, good for you, Donald, good for you. I want to kick some heartless asses though. It feels like, I don't know, I don't know why this just feels weird. It don't feel correct, but hey-ho. I want to kill some heartless, I'm just going to go find some. I love how fast you can run around though, I ain't almost this. Ah, uh, Bayleaf. Bayleaf! Bay! Bye. But still. Um, so yeah, I've been playing this since I was just a little, little, little itty bitty baby. And like, every time, it just comes back, back again and again and again and again and again. Like, they've released one every year for as long as I can remember. But having it now in new freaking in new content and stuff, it is so fucking good. Like, I'm not even attacking at this point, I'm just fucking jumping around and pissing myself. Oh, Skydash, where have you been my entire life, kid? I love you. I just want to try and find some Heartless, but no one's chilling out with me. Sad face, sad face, I want to kick some- I want to try- because all I want to do is test out this new Keyblade. I've just bought it, and I want to know what it does. I'm, I'm all about it. DLC, have my fucking money. Square Enix making Kingdom Hearts shit. I'm not making it the game shit, but just like giving me stuff to do in Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, go for it. Take all my money. I will throw it at you. Like I wouldn't even be nice. I will throw it at you. There's no Heartless though. Where the fuck is the Heartless? You're telling me there's no Heartless around, like at all. Are we being serious? This is too happy to to go lucky. Just have to be chilling out. Having nice exploration in Kingdom Hearts itself. To not fight shit. How do I do that? I want to do it. How do I do it? Dude, I'm sick. I'm awesome. Alright, I want to fight some Heartless though. And they're not spawning for some reason. What level am I anyway? Level 39? Really? That's not good. Hold on, can I actually... I want to upgrade my fucking Keyblade. But I forgot how to do it. I really forgot how to do things. Like... I've got all this good shit right here, but there's a way to increase your Keyblade, and I forgot how to do it completely. I really, really, really have. So, other than that, though, Kingdom Hearts game is still Kingdom Hearts. My love for this game is through the roof. Now there's a number three out in my life. Hello. Oh, that's what I came here looking for. One of you bastards. Yes! I'm ready! Fight me! I wanna kill some key- I wanna kill some keys. I wanna fight some keyblades. I wanna fight Heartless! With my new keyblade. I don't think, like, see the reason why this is, like, second of my favorite games? There's not enough worlds to visit. The game is long. Like, it's 40 hours long, so I'm gonna play this for a very long time. Oh, fuck the chariot. It's fine. Here we go. Okay. Alright. Okay, I'll, I'll let that one off. Bouncy wise, let's go for it, kid. Okay. I'm going to be a little bit um, on the downside because I've not played this game in a long time. Right, second form zero was this. Oh, it's exactly the same thing. 
I'm okay with it though. Ah, there we go, level 40. What the fuck, I got some red experience from that. Jesus fucking Christ. But still. Right, where the fuck is that douche? Rage forms available! Oh fucking hell yeah, bitch! Go for a wrist charge. Oh yeah, I don't attack, do I? There we go. Right. Fight me, motherfucker! Oh yeah, I can't heal like this, can I? Donald Meteor! Wrist charge! Excuse me. Can I- can I end? Oh, I can't end this one, can I? It's rage form. Well, I died. Maybe I'm not ready for that one just yet. But apparently there is a, uh... Prepare. I don't know what I can do to my Keyblade, though, to make it better! Maybe I'm using this really shit Keyblade. <laughs> Let's use Happy Gear. Happy Gear is a good Keyblade. Yeah. It's a really good Keyblade. But, um, no. There's new keys which I like about in this game. You visit some old friends, you visit some, a lot of new places. I like how this one's just to introduce the Pixar side of things, and the one Marvel world they've got. Which is quite nice, so it's like a stepping stone for where it's going to get. But this game can only get better towards the end of the year, because I've seen the trailer for the, the Remind thing. Which, basically, all that really does... Here we go, Apic is my boy. Fucking love that shit, man. Let's get a cure. Tora, please. There we go. So I feel like... Um, here we go. So I feel like when that one comes out, we get to play as fucking Roxas, of all things. Oh, it is just so good. I want to play as Roxas, and when I saw that scene in this game, I had to contain my screams. I was playing it late at night. He got announced, and I got so fucking excited for it. Like, really goddamn excited. But still, nothing I can do about it now, though. And we just got to wait until the end of the year. See, that's what's more better is when I've got a keyboard that can actually do things. Right, I'm not rage for me. Fuck that shit. I don't want. I need. I don't need to link summon. Come here, bitch. You're down on my freaking fish, fish now. Right, here we go. I don't need rage. Oh yeah, because it does a special move, done it by the time I get flare, flare force. Uh, how do I flare force? Finish. Here we go. Does it bring it in? Does it jump? It jumps. I know that. Okay, never mind. I suck. I forgot how to freaking play the game properly, to be honest. I've not played it since it came out, but I played it the day it came out and the day after it came out. So by the time, like, it came out on the 29th of January, finished it on the 30th, and I'm like, wow, I've not played it since. I played it a little bit afterwards on the Xbox One to get some achievements, but uh, since then. So what I do with Kingdom Hearts, I love it. I can play it anytime I want. But because I've got other things to do first, I just kind of leave it be. But, there you go. Number slot one place. Kingdom Hearts 3. So, if you want to know, well, if you want a good quick recap, in fifth place, we have the Danganronpa trilogy for the PS4 that got re released in March or April. Then, with number four slots, we have Devil May Cry 5, because that game's good. We have Devil May Cry 5, which came out in March, March 8th, I think it were. Then we have Resident Evil 2, the remake, for slot three which came out in January 25th. Then we have Crash Team Racing as a number, sec number two slot, which came out on the 21st of June, which was literally just a few days ago. And then we had Kingdom Hearts 29th of January. Like I just said, Kingdom Hearts, I'm looking forward to the DLC that comes out for you, my good sir. I want to play more of you. And now that I've beaten you, I can do. And that's what I struggled with, because that's not the one I wanted. But, either way though, that is all there is now for another year of YouTube. So, hopefully you'll, hopefully I'll, I'll be around, you'll be around for um, the fifth anniversary of YouTube. I don't think I'll be continuing much more after that. But I do have a deadline for YouTube's end date, which is basically finish off all I wanted to do with Hyrule Warriors. However, after later today though, the blue map that we are on is going to be finished. Maybe. And then after that, I'm going to go move on to Watch Dogs 2, because Watch Dogs Legion has been announced, so I do want to uh, get on top of that. I do have the disc ready waiting for me now on Watch Dogs 2, so I will be going over to that, continuing on a little bit more, which is fucking brilliant. So, yes, finish off Hyrule Warriors later today, which I'm going to do, or start on now. It's going to take a long time to go through, because it's going to be tough. But either way... That is all there is for this video's anniversary of the best, best, my favorite five games of the past year. 
Hopefully, there's going to be something more. Sadly, King Hearts will not be on top of the list next year unless they release it for the Xbox One, which by all means, it probably will be number one <laughs> because it's remake of all of them, which I'm hoping it'll happen, but we'll soon see. But either way, that's all there is going to be for today with this weird-ass video that we do every year. And as always, we're not going to do another outro today because there's so many freaking different videos and probably copyrighted by somebody else. But either way, this is Rick's Light signing out.